Well, greetings once again to my shop. Today's topic, I'm going to do a Christmas ornament. It's that time of the year. It's the end of September, but my club, the Warland Wyoming Woodturners, is getting ready for the Festival of Trees in November. And we are starting to turn ornaments. And this year, the theme of our tree is going to be uh, a Western theme. So here's an example of what I'm talking about. It's got a bark edge on it. And I'm going to show you how I did that. Here's one with the lid completed right there. And there's the base of it. So I've got a tenon for the lid that I'll glue in later. And here's a spigot for my scroll chuck. And we'll finish up this one, do a little bit of work on the lid. And what I'm using for this project today is some Russian olive. And I've taken the time to mill out some pieces of Russian olive. Now this Saturday, my club is going to do an open house or an open shop. And we're going to turn some different things and hopefully we'll take a look at these ornaments. And this is from a Russian olive tree. That's for the base. And I've got some maple set aside for the lid. And I think today I'm going to do a little bit of texturing on the lid. That's always fun. This is some of the maple I'm using. And you can buy this. It's a round. Um, it comes round, which is really awesome. And I don't think it's very expensive. It's hard maple and it's very nice. One thing I would mention, here's another example of one I'm doing. And the back of that is split. So you might mill these up into three or four inch lengths and let them sit around your shop for maybe a week or a month or something and make sure they don't crack all the heck. So let's go over to the lathe and we get going. Okay, now in this video, I'm gonna do some off-center turning, so I'm gonna make sure to wear my face shield. Okay, now the wood I'm gonna use is a branch of Russian olive, and it's about two inches, two and a half inches in diameter. You can do whatever you want. I find that if you start with a branch that's too small in diameter, you don't end up with a very large section of uh, natural edge on your piece. So. That's the piece we're going to work on. This is what I'm aiming for. I've got a spigot right here on one end for my scroll chuck. And on the other end, I've got a tenon that's going to be glued into the top of my piece. So when I chuck this up, I'm going to have this so that I have the elongated area here lined up. And I can save that in my final turning. Make sure that's locked in very nicely. Now one thing I learned from Nick Agar, this is my knockout bar, but it also makes a very good knock-in bar. I'm using spur center right here and a live center, of course, on the other end. So I'm going to just knock that in. And I've got this bar through the headstock. You can't see that, but it's a good thing to do. It's uh, really nice. Get in there securely and then make sure you're locked down. Lock that knob in and we're ready to go. Now, I want to make sure that I get all the steps in this, step by step. I may cut some of this out, but one of the most important things is profiling this bark. And I'll do that as we go along here. The first thing I'm going to do, make sure my wood clears my tool rest. All right. And I've got the dimension of my spigot and my tenon marked on my vernier calipers. So I'm going to just start turning a little bit on each end and get those down to that dimension. Now as I start this, I'm going to turn my lathe on fairly slow and build up. And even that small piece is making my lathe jump around a little bit and vibrate, so I don't need to be turning real fast. Now the tool I'm going to start with is a relatively small 
parting tool. I like this tool, it gets really sharp on the end. I've got the, the end angled a little bit and I'm going to make my initial cuts with this. Check my spigot on each end, make sure I'm okay. Now on this end I've got the spigot for my chuck. So I'm going to dovetail that just a little bit so that's going to fit in there. On the other end I've got the tenon that's going to go into the lid or the roof and I want that parallel. I want the sides parallel on that. So what I'm using throughout this video and this process is the same scroll chuck these are long nose jaws. It's the uh, smallest Vicmark, Vicmark 100. And I'm going to find my spigot with the dovetail on it and put that in there. I'm making a bunch of these, so I want to create sort of a process through this whole thing, which will kind of speed it up a little bit. So I'm going to chuck this in there. Right there. Lock that down, and whenever possible, bring up your tailstock. And I think this is uh, very important right now because we're doing an off-center turning, which isn't extremely large, but you're still going to get some vibration. Now, this is where the lid's going to go right here. All right, and all this bark is going to be taken away. I'm going to reduce the diameter of this quite a bit and we're just going to see bare wood. I've got a little branch sticking out and I'm going to try to save that. I want that to be maybe the perch for my little fake bird that's going to sit on there eventually. All right. I'm going to work a little bit on the top. Make sure I clear right there. And the tool I'm going to use right now is a quarter inch Cindy Drozda detail gouge. And I found that the bark will fray off a little bit. And if I use this and go in there at a cutting angle, that prevents that uh, bark from fraying off. I'm going to clean up this tenon a little bit. I'm going to work down to this little branch and I'm going to complete this area right here. I think that's about as far as I dare go next to that branch. That's going to look pretty cool. I'm going to come down here and do a little bit of work. Move my tool rest. Get that in position. Make sure I clear everything right here. And I turn my speed up a little bit. I'm probably turning maybe a thousand RPM. Not real fast. But again, I'm going to use this detail gouge, and that's cutting the bark very cleanly. I like that a lot. Can't really get up very close to my chuck jaws right here. But what I can do later on when I glue in this piece to the roof, 
I can get to that lower section. So I'm not going to worry about it too much right now. I don't want to get real close to my chuck jaws with my tool. Now I'm going to do a little bit more work on this. I think the tool I'm going to go to now is my quarter inch bowl gouge. One of my favorite tools for doing small work like this. This particular tool is a D-Way. Just a sweet tool. Nice short little handle on it and that's all you need for that. Now this is going to be a rustic birdhouse and the next step for me is do a little bit of sanding, not much. I don't care about having this, this surface real, real smooth. I'm going to take this over to my drill press that I've got uh, set up over there with a drill for the opening right here of my birdhouse. Now I've got some friction polish on there. I'm doing a little bit of buffing and I like to have my lathe turning in reverse so I can work on the top of the piece as the piece is spinning away from me like that. Now that looks pretty good, nice and shiny. And Russian olive is really a pretty wood. I forgot I was going to use this as the perch so I didn't drill a hole for the perch. I'll use that little branch and right here I've got a hole for the bird to go inside. And he'll get a surprise because that's not going to be hollowed out. If I want to get real fancy on some of my better ornaments, maybe, I might hollow those out. Now, after turning several more of these birdhouse ornaments, I've decided I will hollow them out. This one is a little bit heavy and clunky, so a little bit of hollowing, I think, will improve it. But anyway, on to the next step. I'm going to work on my lid and have that fit in right here. I am ready to turn my lid and I've already put a tenon on that for my chuck so we'll put that in there. Now here's another lid I've got and I've got an expansion recess right here in the bottom of the roof or the lid. It's going to sit in this orientation like that. This will be the bottom, this will be the top, so the first thing I need to do is form an expansion recess there that's going to fit into the corresponding tenon on the base of my ornament. That's not the right one, but uh, here we go. And that'll fit in there like that. Alright, so this base will go into there and I need to match that tenon up and make an expansion recess right now. Okay, I've got that diameter marked on my vernier calipers and I'm going to mark the end of my maple blank. Now I've made a mark with my calipers and I've highlighted that with a pencil and in the end camera you can see that I'm a little bit off. Alright, but that gives me a relationship of where I need to put my calipers for the most accurate mark and I'll do that now. So there we have it. And I'm just a little bit smaller than what I need to be, but I can start hollowing this out and developing my 
expansion recess. So I'm going to just take my first measurement, there's my ornament, and I'm still a little bit small. I'll show you some of this, but I'll probably do quite a bit of this uh, mating of these two off camera. If you watch my videos, I've done this dozens of times, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. Still a little bit small. Now I'm sure in this end camera, hopefully you can see a little bit of a taper. And I'm just starting to fit in there, right there. So I got a taper on that, and if I just take my lathe and just kind of rotate that back and forth, I can get a little shiny spot there, and that tells me the exact diameter. So I'm going to go a little bit farther. And I'm simply taking off more of that taper. Really close to that. So let's do one more cut. And I'm trying to make this area right here deep enough so my tenon does not bottom out. All right, I think I'm going to call that good. I can tap that in with a rubber hammer. And then I'll go to the next step. Now right here, that's running very, very true. And I'll show you the next step that I'm going to do. I'm going to bring up my tailstock. And it's an important thing if you just use the same live center that you started the project with, it'll always line up down here. You can center that again. So I got a lot of support there. Now, eventually I'm going to do more profiling on my roof and I'm going to flip that around and use that expansion recess before I glue my lid in. I can glue my lid in any time at all. So the first thing I'm going to do at this point is detail the very bottom of my ornament base. And since I've got a little bit of thickness here, I'm going to just use that for a little bit of a detail, and I think I'll just make a little point down there. Make sure I clear that uh, little branch. didn't take long at all. Now one thing I'm going to do, and you can probably see it in this camera a little better, I want to reduce the thickness of this just a little bit. And I can take a little bit more wood off right here where that bark is. Um, this is quite thick in here. There may not be anything I can do with, about that, but uh, it is what it is. And I'm going to just uh, work on this right here just a little bit. And one more point, I can see the profile of this branch. So when I set my tool in there, I can make sure I don't hit that. All right, I 
like that. That really didn't take a whole lot. Just one more pass down through there. I'll do a little bit of sanding on that, put some more finish on it. But right now, I'm going to work on this area just a little bit more and try to reduce this and make that a little bit smaller. This is an Allen Lacer scraper. If you ever want to buy a really, really nice scraper, this is probably the one to pick. That's a dandy. But um, a little bit easier to get in there with my scraper than with that uh, little bowl gouge. So I'm going to do a little bit more sanding on that. I messed up my finish. And I'm going to do a jam chuck, take my tailstock away, and finish up this little point down here. First little sanding. And I'm going to turn in reverse. Now, I've got a lot of stuff going on here. Okay? And I don't want to run into this branch or this area right here with my fingers. So I've got a sanding stick that has a saw kerf down the center of that. I'll just take my sandpaper. And this works very well on the inside of lidded boxes and such. So I'll just take that and uh, kind of fold that over a little bit. And I can get in there and get in there with that stick and not my fingers. You know, what you do on the lathe regarding safety depends so much on you, your own experience and skill level, and what you feel safe doing. If you don't feel safe doing it, then find another way, ask a friend. Um, I'm wearing a face shield, all right? And I feel this is really pretty safe. I'm gonna take my tailstock away, right there take that away and just work on this little tip right here and clean that up. I got a hole in the bottom of that I want to get rid of. And that's it. That's all I need to do. I'm going to do just a, a touch more sanding on the very bottom of that, put some finish on it, and then start working on my lid. Now I need to make an important point. Here's my lid. Here's my expansion recess that I'm going to put into my chuck. And um, one thing I've done here is I've just taken some black marker and I've colored that in. And that makes that light wood less noticeable. But as I was doing this, I made that expansion recess too small. It fits the base of my ornament, but it doesn't fit into my chuck jaw, so be careful about that. Measure more carefully, but I've got other chucks. So I'm gonna take this chuck out. And I'm gonna put another chuck in that will fit this expansion recess. These are simply some pin jaws that will open wide enough to accommodate that recess. Now this is another important point here. I'm going to bring my tailstock up through most of this process. These jaws would not be my first choice. They're a little bit small and I've got that opened up quite a bit, but I'm going to tighten that down a little bit more. This is going to be the top of my roof. That's going to be the bottom of it. So with my tailstock brought up, I'm going to do a little bit of profiling on that and a little bit of texturing eventually. I'm gonna to go to a little bit bigger bowl gouge. I've got quite a bit of wood to take off, so I'm gonna just make this into a little bit of a, a cone shape.
I'm taking my point tool and I'm going to make some lines in this right here. Now I'm going to take a wire with a couple little balls turned on the end. Don't ever wrap this around your fingers when you do this. Okay, I'm going to hold that uh, just lightly. I'm going to hold it in these grooves and create a little bit of a burn mark on there. Now what I'm using for this is some picture hanging wire and that seems to be really holding up quite well. So there's my burn marks. I'm going to do a little bit of texturing now and coloring. So I'm going to have my lathe speed maybe going at uh, 600 RPM. I don't have a digital readout on this one way so I just have to kind of guess on that. I need to get far enough back so my, my little wheel on this Sorby texturing tool isn't hitting the tool rest. So that should work okay. I'm a little bit high. I want my tool trailing down just a little bit. Now I think I'll start out with a little bit of green and I'm going to turn my lathe in reverse. I'll hold my marker on top of this spinning piece of wood here. And I'm probably only turning at three or four hundred RPM. pick uh, another relatively dark color. I'm going to pick blue right here. Now I'm going to pick uh, pink. Do some lighter colors and what you can do is you can go over the top of these. Maybe a little bit right here where I, where I didn't hit that. Right there. The fun part about this is you can do whatever you want to do. And this is a great project for kids. If you have a five year old that you don't want actually turning on the lathe, they can hold that up there pretty safely and do a little bit of coloring. Well, that's, uh, that's pretty wild, but that's okay. It's Christmas in only three months, and I think that'll be kind of a fun little ornament. And if you don't like this, you can do something different on the next one. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick one more color. Now I'm gonna do some of this off camera and I'll show you the finished lid. As I mentioned before, I've got a point in the very top of that for my eye hook. And I just need to put a, a little drill hole in that. Now one more thing I'm also going to do is I'm going to spray that, maybe with a little bit of shellac. You're better off spraying this than rubbing on something because you'll smear your colors. So, do a little bit of spraying. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. 
I hope it gave you some ideas for Christmas ornaments. This is a little bit crazy, but uh, that's okay. I like it, and I think the birds will too. So I'll talk to you next time. Thanks for tuning in.